Hi, I'm Dave Erickson. Uh, this is the multi-zone stereo. It's my STM32 uh, design contest entry. Uh, what the project is, is a uh, whole house audio control system. Uh, there are eight sets of stereo inputs and eight zones uh, to be able to drive audio into eight different uh, parts of the house. Each with uh, independent control, in independent uh, tone and source selection and uh, volume and muting and all the audio features you come to expect. Um, we can see the enclosure here. This is the uh, this is the open prototype. Uh, eventually, it'll be built into a box and look like a piece of uh, standard stereo equipment. But for now, and for doing development, I have it into an open uh, open format. And there's a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a plexiglass cover on the top just to uh, protect it and to protect it during shipping. I ship it to the uh, design contest. Just a quick overview of the hardware. On the lower left side, we have a CPU board, which is controlling everything. Uh, there's a graphic LCD display, which displays each, uh, just displays one zone at a time. Uh, all the parameters, volume, balance, bass, treble. There's a keypad which allows you to select the zone, select the source, and control the audio for that zone. And there's a volume control knob that allows you to um, to adjust the volume for the uh, zone that you selected. Okay, I'm going to adjust the volume up. So, select some music. It's like a different source, but there's nothing hooked up to it, so you can see it says source MP3 player. There's, there's no MP3 player hooked up right now. So. And uh, here's the other controls. Balance, left and right. Bass, mid-range, treble. Turn it back down. Didn't really mess up the tone with this. Go back to flat tone. I uh, added a mute function so you can mute the channel. And that's the uh, that's what uh, each channel can do. So now I'll adjust the volume knob. Volume knob is a mechanical detent. I don't know if you can hear it. Now I'll demonstrate the remote control. This is an off-the-shelf infrared made by the all-for-one people. And it's a universal remote. And so let's adjust the volume. Volume down. Let me zoom in here. Let's see what's going on. And the functions that the remote does currently are Mute, uh, volume, and channel select. So I can, just by hitting a button on the remote, I can select the original channel or any of the other sources. Yeah, let's see, let's see if we can see that happening. And there's. There's the original source. And there's the other sources. Back to the original source. Next, I'd like to demonstrate the remote uh, keypads. So there's a ribbon cable here that um, that talks to the uh, CPU board. That ribbon cable goes over through a 15-pin D connector and through these two twisted pair cables. You can see one of the one of the remote keypads is in a little box. The other one is just a bare board. It hasn't been packaged yet. So the way this works is that the 
remote keypad operates uh, each each one operates an individual channel. So, for example, this first box operates channel. Uh, see if we can get it. Operates the uh, deck channel. So this will go on the deck. So as I push the buttons on the remote keypad, I can see the volume increase and decrease balance. So I can adjust the sound a little bit from here. I don't have tone controls on the buttons. I thought that would be too complicated. But you can select, select the source. It scrolls through the sources. And there's a mute. There's a mute function on and off. So, so uh, the way these work is uh, over a single pair of wires is that each key introduces a resistor to the circuit. So when no key is pressed, uh, the resistance is uh, open circuit. And then when you push a push a button, uh, you get a different resistance. So this first button here is 1K, this one's 2K, 3K, 4K, etc. Um, then the CPU board, the A to D uh, converter on the CPU board, is used to read the voltage that's presented across those resistors. There's a there's a pull-up resistor on the uh, CPU board as well to convert the resistance to a voltage, and then the A to D reads the voltage and determines which key is present. So um, the nice thing about this is the keypads are very simple. They can be built out of any kind of buttons and in, in, uh, 1K resistors. And the wires that come off it aren't, are not even polarized, it's just measuring resistance. And you can very easily build little button boxes and put those around the house. They can be built in or they can be wired. And then all it takes is a pair of wires for each zone to control it. And these can be, these can be done remotely. Um, and the system supports up to seven uh, of these remote keypads. And right now I just have two, two connected up. I'd like to give a tour of the system from a hardware point of view. There's uh, the AC comes in, it goes through a fuse and switch. Uh, AC transformer and a uh, linear regulator. That's a plus or minus 12 volt power supply. Home brewed. You can see the two heat sinks. Uh, so there's simple diode capacitor and, and linear regulators. Um, that voltage goes into the, notice that voltage only goes one place, it goes into the CPU board. And the CPU board distributes all power and control through um, through ribbon cables. So the CPU board contains the STM32 module. Um, the LCD and keypad interfaces are on the bottom. That twisted pair of wires that you see going off to the bottom, that's for the infrared. Um, the encoder knob is connected up. That's in the front panel. You can see that. There's the encoder knob. And that's cabled up into the CPU board as well. So on the CPU board, the, uh, uh, the encoder knob and the infrared. The infrared goes into a timer pin on the CPU. And the encoder knob goes directly into some GPIO pins. And it gets read every uh, one millisecond by the time tick interrupt. On the back of the CPU board, we have uh, two uh, ribbon cables. One is, I've pointed out before, that's for the remote keypad. That's this 15 pin D connector. And that just cables up to the remotes. And the other is the uh, I squared C and power connector that uh, feeds the cross point board. Uh, so this, this board is the 8x8 cross point. It consists of uh, eight pairs of stereo input jacks on the back. And I use the stacking type just be, be uh, more convenient and more rugged. Then uh, through film capacitors to uh, high quality audio op amps. These are NE5532s which uh, do a very good job of low distortion op amps. These are uh, cross point chips and they're made by, they were originally made by Mitel. Fortunately they're still made. Bizarre Link is a company that makes them. And on the, below them you see a uh, I squared C chip. The cross point chips use, uh, use uh, set eight control wires, and since I wanted to control everything off I squared C, I used an I squared C to parallel port converter from microchip to control that. So then there's two ribbon cables, two 26 pin ribbon cables that come off, the, off of the uh, CPU board. 
and you can see one goes underneath uh, one of the preamp boards to the other and the other one is cabled directly to the first preamp board. So each of those cables contains four audio channels, stereo, so that's eight, eight signals, and they're all interleaved with grounds. That's how we can... I've had a lot of experience in audio across ribbon cables. If you use interleaved grounds and careful grounding on both ends, then the crosstalk and the performance are quite good. Uh, in addition, power and I squared C are sent across the S ribbon cables as well. These are uh, preamp boards, and you can see there's two of them. They're the heart of the system. Um, each uh, uses uh, stacked RCA jacks. There's the, you can't see the other channel, but there's right and left four channels each on each board. Each one uses uh, film capacitors for uh, high quality audio, for, especially for the tone circuit, but they're also used for input coupling. For output coupling we need a lower lower impedance to drive uh, low level signals, so we use a tandem capacitors. Uh, one of the tricks of these preamp chips is that they don't allow I squared C addressing of more than one device. On a, on a nice squared C bus. So I added some decoding logic and another I squared C device to select um, which I squared C, which preamp is being used. And the only, so there's a little bit of logic there to do that. And the only other trick, we actually use analog, uh, analog switches, uh, H74HC4052 um, analog MUX to select the data and uh, clock and data signals on the S-squared C bus for each preamp chip. And then there's one of those on every on each board. And then the other trick is we use the sort of what I what I refer to as geographical addressing, where when you plug a board in, it gets a if it's on one of those ribbon cables it gets a one on the address signal. On the other one it gets a zero. And that allows you to automatically swap boards without having to worry about jumpers. So there's no jumpers on the boards and they, they're smart enough to know that the one connected to the top ribbon cable on the cross point is going to be channels 0 through 3, and the one that connected to the bottom is going to be channels 4 through 7. So those are the preamp boards. Um, and in here, this is a sweep generator. Uh, let's turn up the volume on that. And we'll shut that off, and I'll show you what the sweeps look like. Over here to our friendly neighborhood scope. This is uh, that's a frequency sweep uh, over the audio range. So you can see, adjust the mid range mid range tone control, and the mid range drops down. Uh, adjust it up, and we get mid range. Uh, treble, same thing. So you boost the treble, drop the treble back down, and the bass control, and boost the bass. And let's see, you can adjust the volume. There's the overall volume, and there's the volume being adjusted back down. Anyway, um, I'm pretty happy with the way it sounds and, uh, and the way it's performing. I haven't done any electrical tests other than a quick listening test and looking at the waveforms on the scope. But I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how things have gone so far. Um, I'd like to say that this has uh, been a fun project uh, and I look, definitely look forward to uh, finishing it up and to packaging it in a decent uh, decent enclosure and having it having it be in my living room where where it belongs so thank you for listening